True Crime Enhanced provides an immersive experience into the world of true crime with the finest audio and video quality using cutting-edge AI technology. Subscribe and click the like button for more. This is the second part of the interrogation of Russell Williams, a former Canadian military colonel who committed multiple sexual assaults and murders, where he confesses the gruesome details of his crimes. Link to part one is in the description below. What do you want to know? Well, do you want to work forwards or backwards? Doesn't matter. Why don't we start with Jessica? How does that start for you? Um, I saw her in her house on her treadmill. Wouldn't stand at ease. And I noticed she wasn't uh, there Thursday. So I got in the house to look around. Then, um, and they left. That was she'd come home. So I went back in. Through the uh, back patio door. All she was and slipping. Platt. So I woke her up. Didn't, um, can hit her. I only hit her once. Friday night. Oh, shit. Well, so I raped her in uh, in her house, and then I took her to the car and took her to Tweet. And um, spent the day in Tweet. And then I hit her around uh, as we were walking. She thought we were leaving. Hit her on the back of the head. Cut. And now when I came to her. Oh, um... What did they hit on the back of the head do? Well, I was surprised it, uh, that her her skull gave way. She is there and immediately unconscious. And I strangled her. What did you hit her with? Flashlight. Cut. In the house or outside the house? Yes. Yeah, they'll find uh, signs of that. Where in the house did this happen? In the main portion, just from the fireplace. What do you mean they'll find signs of it? Oh, it was going to have been blood. I hadn't expected. I'd expected to knock her out. But almost then generated a lot of blood. What did she bleed onto? The floor. It was just a uh, tall floor. Did you clean it up, or did you? I, I wiped it up. I know it'd be, yeah, it isn't this spotted. Well, it makes you think that. Like, if I walked in that house right well, here, would I see it? You would see it all that town. 
Yep. Yeah. You know, all right. So hints will uh, will show it. I'm sure. Okay. Um. So when that happened, was she? Did she have clothes on, or was she naked, or something? Dressed. Okay. So when we find her, is she going to have those clothes on too? Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. Marie France uh, Como. There was an open window in the basement of her and her house, and she was away. I went in there a um, couple of nights before, and she came home. Look around. I went back in there um, late at night when she was at home. She was on the phone in her bedroom. She actually discovered me in the basement. She was trying to get her cat to come upstairs, and the cat was in the basement had seen me and was fixated on me in the corner. She couldn't get the cat up, so I... She came downstairs trying to get the cat, and that... I'm not sure why she uh, came over to me. I guess the cat was staring at me, and she was wondering why the cat was staring at Lights were on. So when she spotted me, I um, had the same flashlight. I subdued her. Tied her up on upstairs. And um, strangled her later in the morning. Well, Mara suffocated her. And some tape had. Flash her there. How did you subdue her? When you say subdued her in the basement, what did you do? Well, I had the same flashlight. And, um, else. She, she saw me right away, so I was just, uh, and I hit her a couple of times and grabbed her head, try and knock her out. Didn't. But, um, was bleeding a little bit. Eventually, um, Chris struck on subdued her. Any blood from, from that struggle? Oh, yeah. No, not on a whole bunch, but uh, flashlight. It break her skin a couple of times. Okay. What area of the basement did that take place in? I was hiding behind the furnace, so she spotted me right there. Okay. She recognized you? No, I had uh, stuff on my face. Um, so you go upstairs, and you said uh, she suffocated? Well, I sort of carry up with tape on her, and I put tape on her mouth, and then I put on her uh, nose and held it there so she couldn't breathe. Um, what kind of tape was it? Thirteen. What happened to it? Uh, well, I took it with me and, uh, can't, can't remember what actually I did with that tape, but, uh, we'll pop it through it in the curtain. 
Did you use tape for any other purposes? Some. Okay. Um, did she ever recognize you through this whole episode? What did you say you had on your face? I had just a, a cover for my head. Just a, you know, a sports, you know, a little tape. And just a little cap capping. Okay. Just a hand. It took me out of my boy career or something. And then they, you know, used to have a band over of my little spouse that covered both their name but my eyes. Okay. Um, now this flashlight, where is that now? A tree. In the house? Yep. What kind of flashlight is it? It's a red uh, three double D. I don't I'm not sure what brand it is, but it's a metal, you know, I'm on these aluminum. It's like a big can. I remember with Brian Bowden in her craft to let him flash lights her he's far. I know it's a big bigger one of those. Then did you take anything out of uh Marie France's house or Jessica Lloyd's house? Uh yeah, some of their uh, underwear. Okay. That's all. From where is that? Island. It's in some boxes in the basement here in Ottawa, in that rick room. We just went against their boxes everywhere. So I'm on the same side as the furnished room, sort of at the back against the wall. What do the other boxes look like? Um, I think one's a scanner, the box for my scanner. Is it? They're they're over next to each other, so a quick look through the boxes there. All right. Okay. How much underwear is in those boxes? Um, on the sixty pieces or so total, all women's, and sixty pieces of theirs. Of whose? Of Jessica's and Dad. Uh, my house. So you took 60 pieces from between the two of them? Yeah. Okay. That's all. All right. Um, and they're in a, like, when you talk about a scanner, is it a computer scanner box? My computer scanner is up in the office and its box is down in the basement. So, okay. It's inside that box. So any of the underwear in those boxes belong to anyone other than Marie Franz or, uh, or Jessica? Um, Yep, there's some from each of the other two women. Okay. Uh, why don't we talk about those two women? Mm -hmm. um, so the first one happened on the 16th, and I don't know why I can't recall their names, but uh, the lady that was uh, lived closer to them. No, I'm hurrying to bullshit me. Okay. So the first uh, the first one, boom. I had just spotted her from her boat, Ashland. I got into the house while she was uh, asleep. Noticed that she was alone. And uh, hit her with my hand while she was sleeping. Subdued her. Mostly just by weight on top of her. And I uh, had her take off her pajamas. Took some pictures. Took some of her underwear and left. And 
head of the other one. Stent kind of deal. Coming through the back of the house. She was sleeping in her, um, not in her bedroom, but in her, you know, front of the TV. Very much the same story. Anything different about that story? I mean, yeah, pretty much the same story and exactly the same story or two different things, right? Yeah. No, uh, not much different at all. Um, I did have the flashlight that time. I hit her with a flashlight. And thinking it would knock her out. Didn't. So I managed to subdue her with my weight. Power for clothes, took some pictures, and left. Why do you think these things happen? Uh, I'm going to spend my time thinking about that. About why? Yeah. Yeah. But I have none of the answers. And I'm pretty sure the answers don't matter. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. Did you like or dislike these women? I didn't know any of them. Okay. I had met Maddie Thomas that one time in that in their uh, airplane. Okay. No, I get. I guess when yeah, when you're going through these things, um, are you? Well, let well, I me mean, let's talk about Jessica because she was there with you for the whole day, right? And what kind of feelings were you experiencing while you were with her that day? Oh, she was afraid I swear. Can you tell me why you killed her? Harass? Do you know why you killed her? Well, I think I killed her because I knew that Tinelli. her story would be recognized. Her story would be recognized? How do you mean? Well, because she knew I was taking pictures. Is it? So because of the um, she of uh, stories of Tweed, I would have been a friendly. Yeah. And quite all this. So if you didn't take pictures, what would you have done with her? I don't know. I mean, she's at your house, right? Don. Well, let, let me ask you this. Is it uh, too lived? Right? And two died. What's, what was the difference in your mind between? Well, the, uh, yeah. the attention the first two God. Um, was very much fo focused on Augustine, or for obvious reasons, uh, pictures I took. So anybody else telling stories about pictures, right, would have been in front of a straight line. Okay, but when when this thing happened with Marie Franz, there was, was did you believe that you were already a suspect for what happened in Sweet? 
No. So what, uh, what were you concerned about? Well, because um, I was pretty sure that, uh, yeah, she was serving military, right? We felt it would have been, uh, it would have been difficult for investigators to ignore that connection. Makes sense. Um, let's go back to Jessica then. Okay. Um, you see her on the Wednesday night. Okay. On her treadmill. How do you see her? There is in the basement. Under wide open. On a treadmill. So I drove by. Okay. Did you, did you stop to look at the house or... How, do, how does that catch your eye as you drive by? Well, I was looking to see who was, who was where. Don't know that area very well, so I was just keeping my eyes open. Okay. So you spot her on the Wednesday? Yeah. Um, do you just keep on going, or do you just stop and take a closer look that night or anything? No. At... And you went back on the Thursday night, right? Yeah. So you go back on the Thursday night and you went you went into the house before she came home? <coughs> yeah, she was out. Okay. About the dogs. Um yeah, she was out. Got in through the kitchen window. Some locked. Everybody else was locked. Okay. So you're in there doing what? Took her in. Took her in to see who lived in the house. It was just her. Okay. And then what do you do? Well, I left the house and uh, and then she came home I hadn't been out of the house right on so I watched for a little bit to see if she was on she was When it and she went back to sleep, punch it was sleep. So you go in, she's sleeping, and what do you do? Well, I snuck up to the side of her bed, expecting to uh, try to knock her out. She woke up, but she did as I said. I was good. Here. What did you say? So to lie down on your tummy. What? Okay. She did. I tied her up. What did you tie her up with? Some uh, rope I brought. So she's on her stomach. How are you tying her up? I tried just tying her hands behind her back. Okay. She got clothes on at that point? What kind of clothes? The sweats. All right. Tie her hands behind her back, and then, then what happens? Lauren took her coys off. Okay. And then what happened? 
I raped her. A rape could mean a lot of different things. What kind of sexual act it took place? Tell me. Vaginal and oral. Oral, who was performing the oral sex? Uh, uh, me on her and her on me. Okay. Any uh, any condoms used or anything like that? No. So they're hanging a quirk for man. Vaginal intercourse. Uh, her playing, performing oral sex on you and you performing oral sex on her. Do you remember what order those things occurred in? Yeah. I uh, started with the oral sex. And I raped her. And then later on, I made her perform oral sex on me. Okay. Anything, any kind of conversation happening when this is going on? Yeah, a little bit. What was being said? I threatened her before she, uh, before I had her perform oral sex. What did you say? Well, I put a zip tie around her neck. Friends said uh, that I would pull it if I didn't quite quit to shoot me to Okay. So she did what you told her to do? Mm -hmm. Any issues there? Any reason to pull it? So do you remember if you ejaculated at that point? Or at any point? Uh, um, probably at that point, but later on. The oral sex finishes, and then what happens next? Well, I I continued um, to rape her, and I had her put out some of her underwear. I took some pictures, lots of pictures. And then got her dressed. Walk back to the truck. Okay. At what point did you decide that she was going to leave with you? I'm not sure that wasn't um, necessarily all just the plan. But at some point, uh, I was there for. But three, three hours, three and a bit. Okay. Um, do you remember the conversation about leaving? Was there any, she say anything about that or what was she saying to you? She was, um. Certainly cooperates. Okay. A cooperative can mean a number of different things. Was she excited about leaving with you? I mean, I don't want to be sarcastic, but... Um, well, she just didn't put up too much of a fuss. Did she try and negotiate with you at all, or... What did she say? Well, I told her that I would uh, let her go later on. Okay. So when you take her out of your house, is she is she still bound or? Yeah. How how is that done? Just uh, hands behind her back. What about her feet? Anything there? Um, she was walking free it. Yeah. Barefoot or. Mm, she had those brown suede shoes on that 
and been reported. Okay. So where does she sit in your truck when you get to the truck? Front seat, passenger side. Okay. And where do you go? Straight to Tweed. Straight to your house in Tweed or straight yeah. to just the town? Straight to the house. No stops anywhere? No. Okay. What time do you remember what time you arrived there? I don't exactly, but I'd say in between 4.30 and 5.30. Okay. All right. When you were, uh, when you were first there before she came home, do you remember, did anybody come to the door at all when you were in the house? No, I think somebody had come home, as somebody had come to the house just before she did. Because I thought it was her, but then they left. I was outside of the town. Did you see who that person was or what kind of vehicle they were in or anything? Some the lights, I seen it was her, and then all of a sudden, they left, so I don't know what happened. Okay. Um, where were you when that first vehicle pulled up? In the back. Back here. Okay. So you didn't have a view of the vehicle, you could just tell that there was a vehicle there, is that fair? Okay. So you get home. What, 4.35, you say? Then. Okay. And then what happens? Uh, well, she, um, she just go to the bathroom. And, um, uh, she's a quick shower and wash her. I may make to end my bedroom. Then, to sleep a little bit, she was tied up. How was she tied up at that point? Defend the other right? I put um, tape over her eyes from the beginning, so that's what she had. When they find her, is that tape going to be there, or was it ever removed? Well, I ruined. Okay. What kind of tape? Dark kit. All right. The duct tape that you used, where is the where's that roll? Uh, it's all gone. At ten. Um, I used it to I used the rest of it to um bind her. Bind her body. So by all gone, is it is it with the body now? Okay. So he said, "Who went to sleep when you came home? You, you had a shower, or she had a shower?" Well, we both got in. I washed her off after she'd been to the bathroom. We both went to sleep, but she was tied up, and I tied the rope, and so I could fall asleep a little bit. She couldn't move without waking me up. I'm trying to picture how that would be. So the rope's tied to what on her? It's tied to her hands. Behind her back. Okay. And it... And then the rope just wrapped around me a couple of times. So there was no slack. Okay. Do you remember how long you slept for? Oh, well, maybe a couple hours. Do you know if she slept? I don't know. Okay. So you wake up and... Hey, it wasn't bending... We were up and down, up and down. So it was a two hours straight. It was a two hours in bed, but it wasn't much. Just, just flying that caution. So you you get up from that, and what happens next? Okay. Uh, then she had a seizure. Fascinating. She felt it coming on, and um, because she'd had some before. Lasted uh, on quite a while. Got her dressed into the uh, family room. That And 
And anyway, she, um, she recovered. She got, um, yeah. Yeah, up the stress. But, uh, yeah, probably what went on for about 15 minutes. Pray a bit. So, yeah. How do you know she had them before? She told me. Did she tell you why she gets them? Well, she suggested the stress. Yeah, so she felt herself start to tense up and said she thought she was going to have a seizure. Yeah, and so her shoulders, she was mips and convulsions, and so she would fail. So she look up for recovered from that? Yeah, she, um, but I stayed with her and talked to her, right? Make sure she didn't, right? By her tongue. Good. And then what happened? Well, let me have a little lie down right there because she was, honestly, exhausted. But we were referring. But to sleep. Wait for an hour or so. And I had told her um, earlier that before I let her go, I wanted to take some pictures of her in her underwear. And that's to her. Have sex with her. So after she'd had uh, the rest for an hour or so, I had her uh, put on a number of different outfits she had. I'm sorry? Put on a number of, you know, pairs and his bra that she had. I could take it from that. So she put those on and I took pictures. Are you in any of these pictures? Yep. For what kind of what kind of images are you in? Right there. Um, while I'm with her, there's on the hard drives. You'll see there's video as well. So there's a video of the um, yeah. Almost four hours, I guess. Of uh, what? Well, I'm fat. Initially at her place of bad and raping her. And then, uh, You know, so I was running the video and then taking still pictures. So the video pretty much covers half. Did you use video at other places? Uh, and at uh, Randy Charles's as well. And is that video on the hard drives? Yeah. Same type of uh, activity? Yeah. Totally didn't have her put on any stuff. So Jessica poses for these pictures and there's videos and um, and then what happens? Then um, I got her dressed. She thought she was leaving. 
but by teeth. Fruit. And then as we were walking out, uh, I struck her on the back of the head. Okay. When did you decide to do that? Well, I was uh, pretty sure that I wasn't in litter, but um, and the idea of striking her on the head was developed in the afternoon. And what was that strike supposed to accomplish in your mind? What was the intent of, of doing that? Well... I thought I would be able to knock her out, and then I was I was going to strangle her. Okay. So when you actually do strike her, what what's the result? Her skull gave way a little bit. Felt there, and there was a lot of blood. So I think that's what happened. So I was immediately unconscious. And then I um, strangled her. How'd you strangle her? Uh, same rule. Just put her on her neck. Okay. While she was uh, unconscious. Now, what happened to the zip tie that was around her neck earlier? I took it off. Uh, around Denny's. Did you take it off before you put the rope around her neck or, or after or do you know? After she was still. Oh, okay. So the zip tie was around her neck while you used the rope? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you leave the rope around her neck? No. And how did you know she was dead? She and her... Well, her body stopped them. Like... Okay. So what did you do after that? I, uh... I found her up. Yeah. And it was field position. And I had on her wind up the fork. How do you say you bound her up? Is that how you're referring to the duct tape that you talked about earlier? Yeah. Okay. So then what did you? I uh, put her in the garage. It was very cold. And then I went into the base. Okay. Why'd you go to the base? Pardon me? Why'd you go to the base? Because I was flying already the next morning. Okay. So what time did you leave to go to the base? She probably told you about between 9 and 10 or so. On the Friday night? Yep. Okay. So you fly and... Then I drove home to Ottawa. So which night would you? Saturday. So you land uh, and uh, what time are you landing? Six six thirty. Okay. Saturday night. 
Did you go by the house in Tweed on your way to Ottawa? No. Um, so you drove straight home to Ottawa? What time did you get there at? Do you remember? In time before midnight. I can't quite remember this event. I think I went in the office first, did some work. So I think I got home to Ottawa. It was before midnight to life. I think, I sure I, I slept for a little bit at the uh, Tim Morms in Brockville. So I'm like, is that right? I was thinking everyone when I get done a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Midnight ish, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you get home here in Ottawa, what do you do? Go to, go to bed or get, stay up? Okay. So then what do you do the next day? Or my wife and I did some stuff. I can't remember what, uh, what was going on that day. Yeah. Putting together the, the nerves. And I had it back to Tweed that night. Go ahead. Tim? Sorry. Uh, no, I did. I had, uh, I had Monday off. That's right. I had Monday off, and then I was visiting uh, one of the units in Ottawa on Tuesday. So I didn't head back to Tweed till Tuesday night. Okay. Yep, there. Get back to Tweed, and what happens next? I uh, took Jessica's body to that spot. Okay. That happened on Tuesday night? Just this past Tuesday, obviously. Okay. Do you remember what time that was? That's pretty late. It was uh, midnight-ish. I'd say between midnight and one. All in there. What did you learn? Okay. Um, what made you decide to, to measure that distance? That point seven kilometers? That's just the way I am. Numbers. Have to know the numbers. Okay. And um, how did you leave it? I just left her tip behind a, um, a pretty large rock. Is that duct tape still on her? Mm -hmm. And what else is on her? A couple of towels wrapped around her head. And uh, on the top and pants, she was wearing jeans. Okay. Did you ever go back there? Um, what other type of cleaning and things like that did you do? Anything else to kind of cover your tracks that you can think of? I vacuumed the house and I uh, wiped uh, the floor, washed the floor. Okay. What about your truck? Did you do anything with that? Just uh, washed today because it was a mess and a vacuum. Um, so Marie Franz, when did, uh, when did it first occur to you to go to her house? Violin. Not probably in October. October, November, not quite sure, but somewhere in that time frame. And do you, re do you remember why you, that you thought to um, to do that? Okay. I know. Well, 
You know, she had said she lived it all. When the one time I met her. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to understand like, why her versus you know the dozens of other women you probably come across on a daily basis. I don't. Yeah, I. Said her I'm out there uh, when she wasn't home just to see where she lived. When did you do that? A couple of nights before. How'd you know her address? Her aunt was then on the road for the basement. Okay. So when you go out there a couple of nights before, do you remember what night that was? What day you were there, first time? I don't, uh, but I, it was within two or three nights, I think. Okay. Oh, well, and more than four, I had, something like that. And did you actually go into her house on that occasion, or did you... Uh... Okay. So what happened that night? How did you, how'd you get into her house? This window in the side of the basement. Side window. Okay. We're just a back step a bit. How did you get to her house that, that first night you went there? I drove. What do you drive? Uh, I drove my truck. We couldn't find her. Do you remember where you parked it? Yep, I parked it to a bit of the division in the residential area. Is there a parked on the other side? Six, seven hundred meters away. Okay. So not on her street, on a different street? Do you remember what street you parked on? No, but it's uh, actually next to the same street, but there's an interruption in the street where there's a construction zone. There's a pathway in between, so I think it's probably the same street. Okay. So uh, you go to her house, and when you went there that night, did you know that she was away? Uh, I'm not sure if I knew entirely, but I... And I think I helped you with way. Okay. Is that based on her schedule or, or how would how would you know? Uh, well, my, yeah, because I fly with the squatter and I have access to the schedule. And I'll consider a slightly different schedule for you, Hesco. That's probably all I know. You don't know for sure? I think that's probably how I am. So you go to her house, and what do you do that night, the first night? Front on and looked around, and um, and make sure that she was the near on. And I'm sorry, did you say? I can't remember if you said how, how did you get it. Same, same light, it's a dog, side, paste and window. Side basement window. Do you remember what kind of window it is? Like what made it? Uh... Well, I just noticed it was on well, the flashlight. I could see that it was not locked. It had been open slightly. Or so I'm going to move the screens because it opened. Went in. Okay. So you go in and uh, you're in her house, figuring out she lives alone. And, and uh, do you do anything that night? Yeah, that's playing with her around. Uh, underwear. You mean playing with her underwear? Not wearing it. Okay. Doing anything else? For I didn't touch her stuff. What do you mean you didn't touch her stuff? I mean, you touched her underwear, but... Yeah, yeah. But on the else? 
Did you take any of the underwear with you that night? Yep, a few pieces. And where did you find the underwear when you went to her drawer? Was it clean? Was it used? For the clone? Okay. Um, anything else you can remember doing that evening that you... Well, pray. So, um, after that first visit, did you return again before meeting up with her? No. So, which day did you go to her house when she was there? Well, the night before I went to Ottawa, so I think that was Monday night. Uh, so let's walk through that. Uh, what time do you think he got there? About 11 or so, probably. 10, 30, 11. Okay. Temp, so she was on the phone in her room. To hear that uh, from the backyard. I got in through the uh, side window. The same basement window? How could you hear from the backyard? What was... Uh... She heard her on the phone. Front beside. Beside the house. She heard through the waltz that she was on the phone. Okay. Any idea who she was talking to or what she was talking about? Yeah, that one. Okay. So you go in through the basement window. And what are you wearing when this is happening? That that sweatshirt, dockers, or yes, yeah, yeah. two pieces on my head. Okay. Where are those two pieces now? Pieces that you wore on the head. Uh, they're probably in my bag, in uh, my luggage bag. Edison the better. What does your luggage bag look like? It's had a blue duffel bag type thing. It's rude to the bed. Is it the only blue duffel bag in your bedroom? Uh -huh. uh, and these pieces, what do they look like again? It's a blue headband. Okay. Standard blue and what's your headband? Had a uh, black skull cap type thing. Any insignias or anything on them? Yeah, there are, but I don't know what they are. Think the blue headband has something stats that um, they're stitched, a name of some sort stitched on it. And the uh, skull cap has some sort of emblem on white emblem on the black. I don't know what it is. Are they like sports emblems or company emblems or? Um, it's the manufacturers. Okay. Anything else in that blue uh, duffel bag? I like some. Is it full of, of things? Oh, just, just my clothes. Okay. Um, you go in, uh, do you remember what you had on your feet? And the house there? Only went to Marie Francis' house. Probably running shoes. There was a saw on the ground. Yeah. So you go in, and you're in the basement. And uh, whereabouts in the basement are you? Uh, by the furnace. And what are you doing? Like, what, uh, what's your, what's your sort of plan at that point? I was waiting for you a bit. Okay. And how long did that take? Well, she did. Cause then she came down looking for a cat. All right. And uh, what happens next? Um, as I described, I subdued her. Hit her with a flashlight. But essentially, 
Pinky up. Wrestled her to the ground and tied her up. Okay. What did you use to tie her up? Same rope. Green rope. It's in tweed. Is it just green or like uh, how long is this piece of rope? It's probably uh, 20 feet. It's, it's a boat, boat rope. It's got some red specks in it, I think. Is there lots of ropes in Tweed, or is this probably the only rope? No, this, uh, there are two, two lengths. Two lengths of the same green rope? And were they both used? Uh, well, I only wrapped one with me, so I don't know if I used the same piece both times or not, but only two lengths of rope. Okay. So you tie her, tie her up. How did you tie her up when you have to subdue her? Okay. And what is she wearing at that point? She wasn't wearing anything to start with. So when she came down to the basement, she had no clothes on? And she had some sort of a shawl over her shoulder. Okay. But she immediately dropped on she's high. Did she say anything when she signed? She did. She cuddled out, you bastard. Okay. And then what happened? Then I subdued her as I described. I hit her near with that red flashlight. Okay. Follow the word or glance him, glance him blows. Cut her skin, but weren't doing much else. She fell over in the nice and deep. You should trip. How did you tie her at that point? Like, I know you used the rope, but what, were you, what did you tie her up like? Pull her, put her, I uh, pulled her hands behind her back and just and tied her wrists together. Okay. And then that went out and up that. Then I took her upstairs. Did she go upstairs under her own power, or did you carry her? No, nope, she passed out to, um, on the stairs. And then I carried her. Why do you think she passed out? I spit uh, from the hits to her hand. So you carried her up to where? To her bedroom, put her on the bed. And then what happened? How it happened? Uh, well, as I described, I think I am uh, from the bed. I raped her. Called for a period of time. And again, just to be specific with what sex acts took place. Just vaginal. You know, your penis and her vagina? Yeah. Any kind of use? No. Did you ejaculate? No. Did you ejaculate at any point with her? No. Okay. Um, but just before I forget, you I think I asked you, don't mean to bounce around on here, Russ, but with Jessica, I asked you about ejaculation. You said you didn't at that point. When did you ejaculate with Jessica? Uh, I remember the second time or third time that I had her at for moral sense. And was that at her residence or yours? Hers. Yep. Any other times that you ejaculated with her? Okay. Um, when you ejaculated with Jessica, did you use anything to clean up for? Yep. What happened to the ejaculate? That's you swung it. Um, so getting back to Marie Franz, straight vaginal sex, no condom, no ejaculation. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, how long does that go for? Like how long are you engaged in that activity? Uh, well, hour and a half, two hours, eight. Okay. And then what happens next? Well, as I described, I suffocated her using men the tape. Why did you decide to, to do that? Well, again, because of pictures. And the, as I described here, it would have been... It was going to be a pretty straight line back to tweet. But why, why, why did you decide to use that method versus something else? So. I had uh, thought about strangling her earlier. That's some of the video. What is? Try uh, a but it was a short short lived attempt because she struggles by this. Then I decided that I needed to suffocate her. So it was a short lived attempt at strangler? And what's on the video, the suffocation or the strangling? Well, just me putting my hand on her throat. And then there and responded in a surprise very aggressively. Okay. Any videos of the, uh, the suffocation part or pictures of that? Um, now, you, you mentioned that you brought the rope with you. Where did the duct tape come from? I brought it. Okay. And what did you do with it afterward? I think it uh, didn't stay in tweet. What color of duct tape are we talking about? I know it comes in a variety of colors, but gray. Gray. Um, so before... Uh, the suffocation, um, obviously, how, how long do you think you were with her from the point, well, how long do you think you were in that house from the point you went in that window to the point you left? Probably um, four hours. Okay. So, correct me if I'm wrong, did you say you were that got there at 11 or around 11? I think that's right. So you, if you left around three in the morning. Well, I was in the basement for quite a while before she came down, and she was going to bed. So I was probably in the basement for three, forty minutes. Okay. So by the time she saw me, it was probably closer to midnight. All right. Um, but I didn't have a watch up, so I'm not sure. Any gloves? Joe Pizzo. Did you wear gloves with Jessica? Found her a ball lady to get in the house. It's a very cold night. And what about the two women in uh, in Tweed? That was. So while you're with Marie Fonz, what kind of conversations are taking place? Should anything in it, she said to you stick out in your mind? I teach her mouth. So a conversation. Okay. What did you shape her mouth? 
as soon as they got her up to the bedroom. Why did you decide to do that? Because she was so. Uh, Yeah, I'm quite aggressive. In what way? So it was coffee. She was, uh, we have screened, if the chance. What way was she did initially? Did she? In the basement. So in what way was she aggressive? Well, just in, yeah. She discovered, hey, she was very vocal, screamed quite a bit. Until I subdued her, so I expected she would scream and began to give the chance. Okay. Do you remember how you left her residence? Back door. Is that how you feel? Okay. Did you take anything with her that night? Some fur underwear. Anything else? All right. Uh, did you do anything else to try and uh, cover your tracks with me, France? Bounds. Well, I had turned off my Blackberry before I left Trent. Other than that, no. Do you remember trying to destroy any kind of evidence or, that, or anything you thought may have uh, produced evidence or anything? Oh, I took her sheets off the bed and ran it through the laundry. Like the laundry where? I'd... In her house. Okay. Did you run it completely through? Did you wait for it to finish? or Just put the man and put a whole bunch of bleach in and let it go. So the night you went to her house and got there at 11, you came from where? And you said you left Trenton. You turned off your Blackberry. Did you, are you talking about the base or are you talking about uh, where did you leave to go to her house? Well, no, I just turned off my Blackberry before I left the Trenton area. Now then, I would have left from the base after work. All right. When did you share your, when did you, uh, what time do you think you turned your Blackberry off? Well, it's only a half hour drive to Brighton, so. Yeah. Probably in the 9, 9.30 range. Do you remember what, uh, what time you would have turned it back on? When I was back on the fur one heading to Ottawa, that was mine. The time of that a bit. So, six plus or minus 30 minutes. So you leave her house three-ish? No, I think it was later than that. So the four hours, obviously, it is. I think, uh, um, man, so I think it went in about 11. It was in the basement for quite a while. Probably left her house closer to four, 4.30, somewhere there. Okay. And where do you go? Uh, I drove to Ottawa. Straight to Ottawa? Did you go by your house in Tweed or anything, or did you just go straight home? Do you remember what route you took? Uh, yeah. 401, but from her place, uh, I think I went straight north on whatever the road is. It goes straight through Brighton after the 401. At the 401 and headed east. And so you're going to, what's the meeting you're having that day in Ottawa? Remind me. Meeting on the C17 acquisition project. Okay. And who ran that meeting? The project manager, Miss uh, Sue Pale. Okay. Is that the only meeting around that time period you would have went to on that issue with Sue Hale? There wasn't like a weekly meeting or anything like that? Okay. No, this is sort of a quarterly. All right. Um, so the night you went, the night this happened, uh, where did you park uh, that night? 
as I said, across the gravel or roadway, probably it's probably the same road. Okay. Similar location to the first night? Yep. All right. Same same vehicle? Yep, and truck. Yep. All right. Um Okay, well, let's talk about uh, the, well, seeing as we're going backwards in time here, why don't we talk about the second incident in Tweed um, with uh, Laurie Masakai on its, uh, its 76 Cozy Coals. How did you uh, decide on her? I knew she did the Lord. How did you know that? Friend patient asked three doors down and uh, didn't know her, but I knew she was pretty long. She had a boyfriend and hadn't seemed to be, hadn't been around. And but I looked in the window and she was on. So she she had a boyfriend, but he wasn't too frequent. Okay. Well, she told me that they were fighting, so that's why he hadn't been there. Okay. So, uh, did you look in her house before the night that this uh, this incident happened, or when did you do yeah, that? I had been in uh, within a week. On a couple of nights earlier. What did you do that night? I, um, I looked around to see if there were any permanent signs of her boyfriend, I guess. Took uh, one or two pieces of her underwear. Something. Okay. So tonight you go there. Uh, when the incident happens, uh, what time that was? I was pretty late. Um, I probably got into the house around midnight. She was asleep on the couch. Oh, I didn't know that. I knew she was in there. And how'd you get in, sorry? A uh, window in the back of the house. Is that all? Sunroom. Was it just something you had to slide, or, or how did you get that roof the screen and, and then slide it up? Okay. So I got into the house and down. Uh, she was asleep in front of the TV. Wearing anything on your face that night? Yep, same things. Okay. The... Headband and the uh, the cap. Okay. Um. What kind of clothes did you have on? Dark sweatshirt or pants. Right. So she's asleep on the couch. You're in there, and then what happens? We have been through this. Day. I know. I struck her with the uh, flashlight. I knew we knock her out. It didn't. We struggled. I subdued her. Took some pictures. Left. So we'll be in the house about two and a half hours. It's a pretty short description for two and a half hours. Well, and we talked. Uh, yeah. Told her I wasn't going to hurt her. I um, I told them that there were other guys in the house robbing her. My job was just to control her. What did she say to that? 
She was scared. Tough word. She was going to be seriously hurt. Did she say that, or did you just assume that? She said that. She was... was worried she was going to be killed. I said, I'm not going to kill him. What did you do with, uh, you said you took pictures of her? Um, Closed, unclothed? Uh, both. Clothed, actually, and then unclothed. Are you in any of those pictures? Comments. You just took them of her? What kind of camera are you using, by the way? But, uh, it's a digital one, a uh, sign. You just have the one camera? Yeah. And the video camera. Also, the two separate? Yeah. Some cameras take, take video, right? Um, and where is the camera and the, and the video camera? And tweet. Is it the only camera, video camera in that house? Yep. All right. Um, so you take pictures of her, and how do you end up leaving? Like you, uh... I just told her to, uh... Plan up the counter, or wait for, uh... Number of minutes for, uh... Before she called the police. And did you leave immediately, or did you stay there for a while, see what she was going to do, or? Um, and where do you go? Home. Straight home? Okay. Did you, did you wait to see if the police showed up or anything, or? No. Well, I let them. So what did you do when you got hold of on your feet? I went to sleep. For what to do the next day? I'm going to work. Turn the time. Okay. A couple hours later. Great. Right. Um, do you remember how uh, her clothing was removed? I don't know. Uh, uh, well, because her hands were tied behind her back, and they could cut off her top and then pulled off her butt. What did you use to cut her top? Uh, I can't remember if it was a knife or like a folding exact knife for Leatherman or one of the two. Are these items that are in your house in Tweet? Was there ever any other time you used a, a, a knife to cut off clothing or anything else? Do you remember? I cut off Jessica's uh, top and a knife. So her hands were tied behind her back. That's all. Where's that knife? Which knife did you use on top? That was the leather. That was the leather? Tweet. Is it the only leather in, in Tweet? Um... So on the 16th of September, uh, when you went in that night, was that the first time you've been at her house? Yeah. Okay. And why her? Just because I'd seen her. She was cute. That's it. Okay. So there was no... You didn't go into her house before that, that night? No. All right. Um, so you go in, and how'd you get into her house? Side window. The, uh, was not locked. Cut the screen, slit the window. Crowbang. Okay. And, uh, what you wear? Sam. Switch your dark pants. The same hat and... Uh, and where do you find, uh, in bed, asleep. 
And what do you do? Stood over her for a while, and I um, hit her on the left side of her head, my hand. Spoke her up. He struggled. You know, I just play on her. And I her and did her. Very much like I described a little bit ago. Took off her pulled her top down and took off her pants. So pictures left. Do you remember her saying anything to you? Yes. What did she say to her? Her Makanda then said, um, I hope she had a a young baby just uh, next door, had the room, eight months or so. Honestly concerned about the baby. Concerned for herself, I assured her I was not gonna hurt her. Physically in that. Um, any underwear taken from, or, parade? Yep. Oh. And where would they be located? Between it. And why are they in Tweed as opposed to, uh, um, Marie Franz and Jessica's underwear? To uh, how much of their underwear you took? Um, not very much from Ori. Did they know that you took their underwear? I don't know. You didn't discuss it with them or anything? Um, so where in Tweed would their underwear be? Um, in the, uh, our, so laundry room area. Okay. Just between the house and the garage. Right. Where in the laundry room area would they be kept? There's a cupboard uh, up top. Fair in that duffel bag. What's the duffel bag look like? It's a green, carny duffel bag. Are they all in the same duffel bag? Is there anything else in that duffel bag? Just underwear. Cut. Um. When these when these pictures uh, are looked at, uh, you talked about being in Marie Franz's underwear on the first night you went in. Did you take photographs of that? Yep. What about anybody else's underwear? Yep. Photos. Of you in their underwear? Mm -hmm. And where were those photos taken? Pal. Well, sometimes in the in, in Maddie Frost's case, in her house. The others in my house. In Tweet? Mm -hmm. So is this a matter you would take the underwear, go back, and and then at some point put the underwear on and take pictures? What about Jessica's underwear? Uh, she's come to her effect. So you know, I have pictures of you and her and her? All right. Um, okay. 
Well, I guess uh, I just have a couple of questions for you. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more questions, but I guess what's on my mind right now, uh, Russ, is um, what made you decide to, to tell me this tonight? Mostly um, to make my and my wife's life easier. Is what you've told me tonight the truth? Yeah. How do you feel about what you've done? It could. Okay. Disappointed. Let me ask you this. If um, this didn't come to the point it's at right now, if for whatever reason you didn't end up on our, on our radar, so to speak, uh, do you think it would have happened again? I was hoping not. I can't answer the question. Okay. Um, not too much here, Russ. Just a, a few details that I wanted to cover off. And specifically dealing with Marie Franz. Um, in the basement of her house, uh, there's a hole in the uh, drywall. Do you recall how that happened? Whereabouts? Uh, I don't know specifically, but it's downstairs. I don't remember that, though. Okay. Do you remember doing anything with her in the basement uh, where you may have used some clothing or something to uh, to secure her? Yep, I tied her up against one of the uh, poles in the basement initially. And I went outside and put the screen back on and secured the window. Okay. While well, she was tied to the pole? Yeah. And what was your thinking behind doing that at that point? Just uh, for her, how it come in. Okay. Um, now, by the time she's tied to that pole, is that in the very initial few minutes kind of thing of the confrontation? or That was shortly after I'd subdued her and tied her up, yes. Okay. Does she have the duct tape on her mouth yet? I think probably what okay. kind pictures will show? All right. Now, in the upstairs bathroom by her bedroom, there's a... Uh, looks like something's occurred in there. Remember that? Yep. What happened there? She had passed out on the bed, and I had gone to look out the front window, see if anybody was coming. And uh, she got up and closed the bedroom door and raced into the bathroom trying to... Uh, get somebody's attention. But her mouth was taped and her hands were tied. What did you do as a result of that? Well, I just got in and subdued her again and got out her back in the better. Okay. He'll do anything, just regain control of her. If I remember correctly, there's a bit, there's a bit of blood in there. Do you know where that blood would have, how that, that would have occurred? All the blood was from the initial hits as I was trying to subdue her. I'll okay. her skin breaking with the yeah, end. Close to her head. I, Do you recall blood being in the bathroom? No, I said I didn't have a light on there. But didn't surprise me. Okay. Um, there's a pair of underwear and some socks on the floor of that bathroom that belonged to her. Do you remember how they got there? Do you remember seeing them? See do you recall doing to her breasts? It's pretty clear that there was some something happened to her breasts. Do you remember what that might have been? I certainly touched her breasts. I didn't do anything to hurt them. Do you remember that? No. Kind of. All right. Um, well, Russ, uh, when I suffocated her, she was on her her, her front 
So may have it's something there, but what do you mean? Well, she was lying up before in the bedroom as I suffocated her, and obviously struggled. May have been in there that something happened, but I didn't give anything specific to her breasts. Okay. So when you <clears throat> suffocated her, that's when you had the duct tape over her mouth and nose, and that's on the floor? Yeah. <clears throat> and um, then what happens after that? Well, she died, and I um, and took the duct tape off her head, put her on the bed and covered her up with that duvet. Okay. And what was your thinking behind doing that? The brand. Okay. Um, as you might expect her arrest, uh, certainly uh, even now, one of the uh, Ottawa what? investigators mentioned to me that um, there's a number of incidents that... Uh, that have gone unsolved over the years. <coughs> and I, uh, I was going to get into that. Can I go with the washroom quickly? Yeah, I can get somebody to take you to the washroom. Okay. Russell Williams was convicted in 2010 for two counts of first-degree murder, two counts of sexual assault, and numerous other charges related to the break-ins and thefts. Beyond the confession, the evidence against Williams was overwhelming, including DNA, and the tire tracks and shoe prints that linked him to the crimes. Williams ultimately pled guilty and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for 25 years. True Crime. Enhanced. Subscribe and click the like button for more.